Whether you're a chestnut farmer, a food lover, or simply curious about this versatile nut, Branching Out with United Chestnuts is your guide to a thriving chestnut community. So join us as we explore the many branches of the chestnut tree, uncover the untold stories, and branching out together towards a sustainable future. And now, your host of Branching Out, Melanie Jones. Welcome back, Branching Out listeners. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce you to a couple who wear multiple hats, both in the corporate world and on their very own chestnut tree farm. Meet Brad and Sandy Russell, the dynamic duo hailing from the heart of retail at Walmart headquarters in Bentonville, Arkansas. They're not just corporate executives. They're also the proud owners of Chestnuts in the Ozarks, a stunning chestnut tree farm and orchard nestled in the picturesque Ozarks. Sandy and Brad's story is one of balance, a journey that takes them from meeting rooms to orchards. I found the interplay between their roles in the corporate world and their passion for cultivating chestnuts to be fascinating. So join me as we explore how the two worlds interact, intersect, and the challenges they face, the lessons they've learned along the way. It's a unique blend of business acumen and rural entrepreneurship that you won't want to miss. So grab your headphones, get ready to branch out, and join us in welcoming Sandy and Brad Russell to the Branching Out podcast. Well, good morning, Brad and Sandy. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Um, so, you know, we met at the Chestnut Growers of America conference and the Northern Nut Growers uh, event at the University of Missouri this past summer. And I think that when we met, at least my feeling is that we knew right off the bat that we had so much in common, similar situations. And that's just been delightful to get to know you both. But I also think there's a lot of people in the U.S. that are have similar situations to ourselves, which is we're working, uh, you know, Monday through Friday or whatever for an employer. But we have this passionate adventure and journey within the chestnut community, you know, um, it's this idea that we're helping to expand an industry and raise awareness of a product in the United States. And I think that's such a privilege. Um, so really, thank you for, for joining this morning. Um, let's just start off with the first question, which is yeah. you, you are both uh, in leadership at Walmart based in Bentonville, Arkansas. And so just tell me a little bit about the story of those roles and then getting into the chestnut business in general. Yeah, great question. Thank you, Melanie. So, uh, Brad, if you remember back in 2006, I, w I was pregnant. We were pregnant with our third child at that time. Um, and, and, and early, early days when we first started talking about purchasing property, you know, at that point, we weren't, we didn't know how much passion uh, Brad and I were going to have for chestnuts. However, you know, I had a lot of questions for Brad on purchasing property. Um, it was a big step for us, right, in, in, our, in our journey, in our futures. Um, so, so we did. We, we decided to just dive in uh, and purchase, I believe, Brad, 40 acres at first. Mm -hmm. And then we just uh, continued purchasing some property to where we are today. Um, and so at that time, I mean, we had basic, we, you know, we, bring, we brought our skills from Walmart, obviously, to what we're doing today, but it's not just that; it's it's our personal beliefs and core values. Um, you know, our core values and personal beliefs align to Walmart's core value and personal beliefs, which is one is strive for excellence and service to our customers. And so, when you take those two things and you work through what is our passion and what is our journey and what do we want to do, what's our yardstick that we want to measure. So we took that, those core beliefs and, and thought, well, why don't we get into chestnuts? Brad did a lot of research on ch chestnuts. He had me convinced that this was the way to go. And that's what started everything uh, for us at that time. Brad? Yeah. I mean, to add on to that, Melanie, I mean, we, we didn't know what we didn't know at the time, right? So, you know, starting out of the gate in 07, um, we weren't even thinking about chestnuts, but I was passionate about doing something with this property in, in, in North Arkansas. Just being originally from Louisiana, moving up here in 2000, you could dig with your flip flops all day in a shovel. Here, it doesn't work that way. So I asked people, I was like, what do you, 
what do you grow up here? They said chickens and rocks. Um, <laughs> but I mean, honestly, I mean, I did a proof of concept in 2016 in kind of a, in an open area of the woods. Not the greatest place to do a proof of concept, but I, I got some bare root, root trees and um, uh, started started those. And they, you know, I, I call those my left for dead variety <laughs> because I literally just planted those walked away, didn't water them, briars, brush, everything wrong about growing trees or doing anything, these trees survive. But um, kind of just fast forward to kind of where we're at today, you know, um, you saw the success there, the capability of chestnuts just thriving. And, you know, in 2019 it is really kind of where it kind of took off for us. Yeah, well, just... Very, very similar to what we hear, and I, I should back up and say that that both of us, you all and, and Brad and myself here, sell trees. And so we have the opportunity to speak to so many people that are very interested in just what we're saying. And our our story was was that we lived in Atlanta and we bought this land in Kentucky, and we did the same thing. We planted trees mostly to create a hunting property just as a place to get away. And these trees would grow and survive when we were in Atlanta. And we come back, you know, so I know there's a lot of discussion on different types of chestnut trees and, and the industry growing, but the fact is it, they are a really good tree. So yeah. that, that's, fan, that's fantastic. Um, so you mentioned, Sandy, like uh, Brad did a lot of research and I've talked to Brad a number of times, so I know he's a very research oriented person, which is fantastic. Um, so how is it? I know how it is working with my husband in this business. How is it for you two like working together? Um, yeah, so one is it's 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 a healthy balance um, between, you know, raising the chestnut trees and, and working full time. Um, but I will tell you that Brad has taken, you know, off the main priority for him is is both Walmart and the chestnut tree industry. However, for me, it's it's my role as really to support Brad. So I play more of a support role for Brad and as he needs help, whether it be at, you know, at work or, or with the chestnuts, um, I kind of, we just do some day labor for him, myself and, and the kids will do some day labor, basically whatever he tells us to go do, um, <laughs> we'll go do that, whatever he needs help with. Yeah. Let, let me, let me say one thing before your part, Brad, is that um, several leaders in this industry who have joined the Branching Out podcast have said for most people in all of our situations, there has to be a source of capital uh, because it's expensive and there's a there's a lot to you know a lot to it. And so I kind of play a similar similar role in in our family, which just makes it super exciting. Like so many things going on, so many elements, and you get to work together as a team to make that happen. So so here's the boss of the day labors. How is it for you? <laughs> I mean. Uh... I wouldn't be telling you the truth if I, if I didn't tell you it was exhausting. Um, when I say exhausting, the, you know, the the mental piece that, that we we have in our jobs today, it's not so much physical, you know, during the week. And um, I'm so happy for daylight savings time. Because <laughs> yes. after, you know, a, after we do our time, you know, uh, with Walmart today, I shift gears and I typically don't come in until like dark. Um, but Sandy's also been my sounding board and um, kind of cheerleader, right, through this process. Yeah. And they'll help with the major milestones, whether we're doing some seeding or, or just some pruning or what she's really good at is putting together like tree wraps, <laughs> her and my daughter. <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, it's tough. Like I go back to to work, right, to Walmart to kind of get a break physically. Yes, but it's it's a passion. Yeah, one one day on LinkedIn, I put a poll out and I said, "Do you think it's appropriate to have a side hustle and talk about it?" And ninety nine point nine percent of the people said yes, and that's what it is. It's not like Court that I work for or Walmart that you work for is having any less effort from any of us. Mm. It's just this extra layer of something that I I find diversifies my skills in ways that maybe I don't use in my day to day um, and just keeps me learning. So that's all good mm -hmm. stuff because we we do want to be careful, you know, that we're not sliding. I know you you travel around the world. I travel a lot mm -hmm. and and we just have to be careful. But 
Um, so speaking of like, is there, are there things that you both do to balance this, this corporate role with raising trees and then building orchards and the sales and the marketing and the technology, everything that we're exploring these days? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, it's uh, balance, right? And that just not just between like work and uh, the farm, but, but also family. And so there's definitely sacrifices that we do there. Uh, I think, you know, with, with Sandy helping a lot with what she does uh, when we're at home in Bentonville and the farm being over here in, in Omaha, Arkansas, um, that that part is what comes to mind for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I would say, Melanie, one thing I do help Brad with is probably more theoretical um, on helping him understand supply chain. You know, that's my area of expertise that I lead at Walmart is is all of your distribution and your transportation, your inbound, your outbound. Um, you know, how do we create, you know, a, a best in class, most efficient supply chain? as we continue to grow in this journey of chestnuts is we have to start thinking long-term, right? What is our long-term vision and what is our North star? Um, so I may not be, you know, obviously more involved, like as not as, as involved as Brad. However, I do help with, you know, him just ideas, you know, what, what thoughts, you know, kind of provoking thoughts to help him and guide him with where we want to go in the future. Yeah, super important right there because, you know, I think that that over the, the last, say, 50 years, there's been a number of people that start an orchard and they have an orchard and they, they sell locally, et cetera. But we're not making a dent in the competition of the world supply mm -hmm. and what we import. So ideas around supply chain and even I know we've talked a little bit about marketing council. How do we get the existing co-ops to come together to be the avocado industry or the con industry in the U.S. And it's going to take all of our skills, the people that are already involved and the experts that have been around for a long time and the new skill sets, you know, like you're just talking about. So, that, so that's fantastic. Is there anything in particular that motivates you? Is it, um, you know, le leaving something to the kids? Is it the different skill sets you're using, the fun of working together? Yeah, I think for some motivation for me, where I get excited is just talking with people about chestnuts. I mean, Sandy hears it in the background. She says, hey, you're talking too loud. Like, why you talk so loud? But there's that excitement there. Um, you hear other people on, on the other end get excited and, and really just, you know, um, marketing and awareness, right? There's there, there's so much there that continues that we hear in these conversations that we're having today and, you know, in, in other conversations that, you know, there, there's so much potential and, and the value of what chestnuts can, can bring to, you know, here to the United States as a staple. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. And even though Brad is loud, um, you know, he's very <laughs> purposeful on yeah. creating, you know, that shared drive and purpose, right? Like I've heard him talk to customers on the phone and, he really drives home what is the purpose, right? The value that we're driving for chestnuts, you know, in society, right? It's, you know, it's it's helping people, enhancing lives and, you know, educating, right? I think more than anything, I've heard Brad educate so much on the phone. And that's why he gets loud and louder <laughs> over time because he's so passionate about what he's talking about. Uh, for for sure. And and I, I know we we experience exactly the same thing. It is so rewarding to have people come or call and, and just educate them. Looking to start your own chestnut orchard? Look no further than Chestnuts in the Ozarks, located in Omaha, Arkansas, just south of Branton, Missouri. We are your one-stop destination in the state for our thriving chestnut trees. And soon, we'll be offering culinary and seed nuts from our vast selection of genetics currently growing in our orchard. Be part of rich history and the tradition of chestnut farming. Visit us at chestnutsintheozarks.com. That's chestnutsintheozarks.com. Dot com and now back to more branching out um the the other thing i wanted to just mention is that recently greg miller from route nine and empire chestnuts joined 
the podcast and he said something I just loved, which is um, to be in this business, you really have to be someone that enjoys problem solving and figuring things out because this is not a cut and dry business. Mm -hmm. And if someone is looking at it solely as a revenue, like give me the revenue calculations, he said that might not be the right person for this. So I think all of us have so much joy that comes from, wow, we get to figure things out. That's what keeps us young at heart and, you know, on our toes. Um, so as you move, like, you know, talking about supply chain and so forth, uh, this idea that in X number of years, you'll, your trees will really be in commercial production. Are you planning and thinking about that now? Um as, as something on the horizon? Yeah, I mean, most definitely. I mean, we got to visit um, Charlie's Chestnuts there just west of uh, Kansas City. So if there's anyone that's, you know, in the regional area, strongly recommend it if you can get some time to see that, just to see the whole process from kind of what I say cradle to grave, uh, past past the labor part of, of picking up the chestnuts off the, the, the floor and how it goes through those stages. Um, there's a lot more there to it than that. So it's going to take, you know, visits, additional visits to, to other locations uh, to kind of kind of see that from from kind of, you know, from from start to finish. Yeah, there's not a, there's not a handbook, you know, that says says do, do this, uh, do that. But uh, speaking to um, Jeremy Kaufman from Propagate an agroforestry company, they're working with farmers to diversify their cropland to have uh, different kinds of, of trees, but a lot, a lot of them are chestnut trees. So talking about like, I believe he said 20,000 acres of chestnuts are coming on board that they're working mm. with. And so as a result of that, um, there's a number of experts in the industry that say, hey, you know, the equipment that we all need, it will be developed when there's enough of a need um, from a commercial level. But until until then, I mean, we still have a large percentage of chestnut growers picking things up and putting them in buckets, you know, Yeah. Um, which yeah. is great if you want to commune with nature. But it's probably better, better supply chain ways to do that. Um, so we, we I mentioned that we met at the Chestnut Growers Association Conference. And I think anyone's listening to this that's new should definitely try to support them and the northern nut growers association but um what did you two take away from that gathering of like-minded people yeah I, I think for me um because i i've communicated a lot through email with greg miller and others uh so behind the keyboard right but coming together to, to meet people in, in person um and just to be able to participate throughout that week in conversations i can't tell you how important it was to me from you know soaking everything up like a sponge talking with tom wall uh and others uh Sandy and i love tom and his wife kathy uh, a lot of fun talking to um but it was one if you got an opportunity i strongly encourage you know if you're considering chestnuts plug in because there were there were individuals there that were on the cusp of starting but were still kind of on the fence wanted to see what kind of partake in this in the conference itself to make the deci decision to, to move forward. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a great conference and I'm really glad I was there. And we actually took our daughter with us as well um, to the conference. But it for me personally, I was able not just to put a name to a face, but it was also around really solidifying what Brad talks about a lot at home and listening to others talk about the same thing. And yeah. so as I learned more, it was able to really spark our story. Like, what is our story um, and what is the value we're driving? And so for me personally, it was it was sparking our story and then aligning on this journey together as we talked, right, coming home. And in fact, on the way home, we were talking about the next one, right, in New York. <laughs> we were already making plans for that. So yes. it, it was it was a great conference for me for, you know, being new to the industry it, it really helped me understand the work that Brad is doing. That's a great, that is a great perspective. And uh, I don't know about you all, but I attend plenty of conferences and I feel mm -hmm. like the people there are so authentic, so mm -hmm. willing to lend a hand. 
But, you know, as the industry grows, there's almost only so much time the Greg Millers of the world can be on the telephone, you know, and so I trying to open up and being transparent about what we know. And we're still, we're still new, all of us, you know, seven or eight years in this still being very new in the industry. But um, yeah. And I, for me, just a privilege to meet both of you and say, Hey, here's a couple doing what we're doing. And you know, the, here they are too. And they are too. Yeah. It validates what, what, uh, what Brad talks about, you know, for yeah, sure. Exactly. Um, so you mentioned your daughter was there. Uh, was she was she into it? Are they are they loving what's going going on? You've got two sons as well, right? Yes, that's correct. Do, do they yeah, do they so like it, it? Yeah, so it was good for Malia. She was actually there helping with the conference, um, believe it or not. Um, but but no, she she really enjoyed the time and the work and meeting people as well, and um, even just learning about the University of Missouri, um, you know, even that in itself was good because she's a junior in high school. Um, and, and oh, I think she should helped. go to school there. She, you yeah, better she, sign her up. <laughs> yeah, no, she found someone that was a graduate and, you know, she, they took her around the school and, you know, it was, uh, it, it even helped her understand like, and be, be motivated, like you said, right. Get motivated, you know, what does she want to learn when she gets to college? And, this really, I could tell it sparked her interest, um, the chestnut industry and the walnuts and, and everything else that she learned. Um, you know, that's something that she'll take with her for the rest of her life. Yes. I want to hear Brad's perspective, but I was just going to throw in that, uh, you know, we all got to spend a little bit of time with Dr. Ron Revord run, running operations up there. And he told me that um, that as these industries are starting to advance, there's now opportunity for real jobs besides mm -hmm. being a professor, you know, that because I was saying that, like, shouldn't we encourage students to be studying this kind of thing? So he, his his perspective was absolutely with sustainability and, you know, diff different kinds of things going on with our climate situation. It absolutely is could be a career path. Um, but anyway, uh, Brad, I know you were busy talking to a lot of people because I saw you. So how what was your take on it? I think kind of the take in, in this process and all and just, you know, it's kind of reflecting on, on the drive home from the conference. If you look at our agricultural model today, it's with with annual crops. I mean, if you think of wheat, you think of corn, mm -hmm. chestnuts, you know, have the ability to be a perennial crop, sustainable crop, uh, environmental, um, less herbicides, pesticides, things along that line. Um, chestnuts, I mean, it, it's still, you know, a lot of people, when you talk about chestnuts, they only know the song. We've all talked about that. And, um, there's so much potential because, you know, everything that you can make with, uh, wheat today, you can make with chestnut flour. Uh, yes. then also the, the biggest benefit to people that it's really eye opening is, uh, the gluten-free aspect too. So absolutely, it's, absolutely. I mean, you have a lot of that there. Um, so I think you'll see a shift, shift here in the United States over time of our agricultural model, which will be exciting because if you think of Europe and Asia, they've been doing this for thousands of years. It's it's still a head scratcher for me on, you know, why we're not much, why we're not further along today than what we are. Yeah. Awareness for sure. Um, well, so in order to expand the industry, we need to have trees. So tell me, I know you're very passionate about growing trees and, and how has that been for you and any uh, words of wisdom for potential listeners, he, in, listeners interested maybe in, in doing this? Yeah, I mean, I think as far as with, with you know, anyone that comes across this, this podcast as listeners is um, you, you have to have passion with, with anything that you do. That you kind of said, referenced earlier about Greg, about, you know, wanting to know the how much money they can make. You can't go into this industry, you know, with, with that mindset. Uh, the, the trees I've done, I think we've probably on our third growing season. I've got a lot of seed source from from Bob Stelly and, and Greg himself, and also repurposing uh, some seed that I have uh, with trees that are already producing here today. But I guess my goal there is, as I kind of wait for these trees to go into significant production, just to like, this conversation today, like meeting people like you and then, you know, meeting with customers, getting our name out there and our brand and just continuing to grow. Yeah. 
uh, same, same here. Uh, mm -hmm. My husband's in love with the trees. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you have to be, you know, in the, and I think it was Tom Wall that just said, he just loves this idea that I get up, I go out and I see my trees and throughout the year, they're doing different things. And it's really motivating. Like I did this. And I think whether someone's looking for orchards to do kind of what we're all doing, or they're looking to just put some trees on their land for wildlife to help the environment, the enjoyment, maybe food products. Like there's so many avenues that we can help people expand the industry. And I, I know you guys agree. It's just absolutely a privilege. Yeah. It, it, it's nice seeing it come together, right? I mean, it's not a light switch. So there is patience. I don't have a lot of patience, <laughs> you know? I mean, so I have to like, you know, this is a journey. And you can ask Sandy as we drive a piece across, you know, up to the house as a parcel of chestnuts. And she'll hear me say the same question over and over. Hey, do you remember when we planted those last year? Look how big they are. Yeah. And it's the same question every time we go by. It's just, yeah. it's exciting to see, you know, exciting to see how they started from a, a bare root, a foot or two. And then today, within less than a year, they're six, seven feet tall. Um, yeah. It's it's phenomenal. It's wonderful. Well, in closing, just any other thoughts you guys have to someone who might be hearing this and thinking, gosh, this is something I could do? Yeah, I mean, like I said, just referenced earlier, I, I think passion, right? You know, if you if you look at on why, you know, farms fail, it's because of the, you know, lack of passion. Um, that, that would say first and foremost is, is the biggest one there, you know, um, looking at, uh, getting, you know, doing research, research as a whole, like listening to, to events like this, get plugged into the community. There's lots of great groups out there on Facebook with their wealth of knowledge. But then again, um, just pick up the phone and, and call someone, shoot an email. I think, you know, having that what we had at the conference talking to real people and not just having to be behind the keyboard and typing up an email. Uh, the conversations were extremely powerful. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely. Definitely agree with, with everything Brad said. And, you know, I think having the knowledge and the practical on hand experience, um, like going to Char Chestnut Charlie's, um, to me, that was invaluable. I, I didn't know a lot about the business itself, but as we did an on-hand experience, it really helped me take that back and, and just really cultivate an understanding of the powerfulness of a chestnut. And then, you know, Brad talked a little bit about data, like information, just be a continuous learner, never stop learning. There's always something to learn and understand. You know, a question that Brad gets quite often is, how did your trees get so tall in such a short amount of time, right? And so, you know, we've talked a lot about that, right? But the the value of uh, and the power of data, right? He's always examining, you know, testing, you know, and repeat, right? And so I think that's very, very important as, as someone is contemplating moving forward with possibly investing in chestnuts. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see that the industry, so, you know, like Greg Miller said, I wanted to have Dr. Ron Reward's job running, <laughs> running the operations that he's running, but I was 30 years too late. But the fact that there's so much interest in, and um, awareness of collecting this data and having mm -hmm. voluntary breeding programs like we're involved in the chestnut industry helping to do that. But the other thing I just wanted to add on is the um, to be bold and to have some nerve because we really are, we're, we're figuring things out as much as we can talk and look and read. A lot of it comes down to, well, I did this and this worked and I did that and it didn't work. And there's more than one way to do things too, you know? Right. Um, so bravo, bravo to us and all of our colleagues out there in the world that are just every day getting up and being bold and, and trying to, trying to, but also we are changing an industry. So I thank both of you for your time today. It's a privilege to call you friends and um, we'll look forward to seeing you in New York at the, the next uh, annual gathering. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Thanks, okay. Melanie. Thanks, Thanks Melanie. Melanie. Thanks, Brad. I Thanks. said hello. Uh -huh. Thanks for listening to Branching Out, hosted by United Chestnuts. 
For information about chestnut trees and chestnuts, visit unitedchestnuts.com. Subscribe to the weekly blog and join the United Chestnuts Community Facebook group. Let's grow together.